Glutathione restoration reduces oxidative damage and inflammation while improving mitochondrial function and insulin sensitivity in older adults. So first, what is glutathione? So uh, glutathione is a tripeptide, which means that it's comprised of three amino acids, including glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. And it's the major, it's the most abundant intracellular uh, antioxidant in terms of uh, intracellular concentration. Now, uh, glutathione has important roles in uh, maintaining mitochondrial function, in uh, g uh, affecting gene expression in the nucleus, and affecting protein folding in the endoplasm uh, reticulum, ER, just as a few examples of its uh, importance. Now, I mentioned that it's the most abundant intracellular ox uh, antioxidant. Uh, how does it do that? So uh, just as an example, glutathione is used to degrade reactive oxygen species, and in this case, hydrogen peroxide. So uh, in the presence of glutathione, GSH, uh, at glutathione peroxidase and hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, the uh, hydrogen peroxide is degraded into water uh, and correspondingly, glutathione becomes oxidized, thereby forming GSSG, which is glutathione disulfide. So essentially two molecules of glutathione become bonded together. And then uh, oxidized glutathione, GSSG, can be reduced back to glutathione by GSSG reductase and also in the presence of reduced NAD phosphate, uh, NADPH. So while these data illustrate glutathione's importance, however, glutathione declines during aging. And that's what we can see here. So glutathione levels are on the y-axis plotted against age. And what we can see is a steady decline for glutathione levels during aging, a significant decline. Now, the obvious question is, can the age-related decline for glutathione be reversed? So first, let's take a look at a study that, that tried to uh, do that. So uh, here we're looking at, again, glutathione levels on the y-axis, and this is glutathione levels in red blood cells. And what we can see is when comparing young adults versus older adults, so the young adults were 31 to 40 years and the older adults were 60 to 75 years, and this is a very small study with 16 total subjects, we can once again see that glutathione levels are lower in older adults when compared with young subjects. Now, when considering that glutathione is comprised of those three amino acids, glutamate, cysteine, and, and glycine, are there age-related changes for these amino acids as a potential explanation for why glut total glutathione declines during aging? So that's what they measured, and uh, that's what we see here. So uh, levels of glycine, cysteine, and glutamate in red blood cells in young subjects and in the older adults. So uh, <clears throat> first we can see that there were, well, I should say there were no significant differences for glutamate, 463 versus 464 between the two groups, but there were significant declines for glycine and cysteine in the older adults. Uh, so 55% uh, lower levels of glycine in old, 24% lower levels of cysteine in old when compared with young. So then the obvious question is, can restoring glycine and cysteine increase glutathione? So to try to do that, the authors of this study uh, uh, performed a two-week study in which they supplemented uh, uh, 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for glycine, 0.13 grams per kilogram body weight per day for N-acetylcysteine as a cysteine donor. And then for a 70 kilogram person, those, uh, those doses uh, equate to a, a significant amount, you know, a lot. This isn't the amount, uh, amount these aren't amounts that you can get from a normal diet. Uh, 7 grams per day of glycine and 9.3 grams per day of N-acetylcysteine. So what happened to glycine, cysteine, and glutamate levels in older adults that were supplemented with glycine and N-acetylcysteine? And what we can see is that they were restored to relatively youthful levels. So uh, it went from 218 up to 529 for glycine, uh, and then for cysteine up from about 20 to uh, about 31. So uh, okay, the individual amino acid levels were, were restored, so what was the uh, impact on glutathione levels? And that's what we can see here. So for older adults that were supplemented with glycine plus N-acetylcysteine, glutathione levels were restored to youthful levels. Now, these data were in a two-week study, and uh, although they reported uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, lipid oxidative damage as a result of glycine and N-acetylcysteine uh, supplementation, which I haven't shown you here. If you're interested in that data, I'll post a link to this study in the description. Uh, so the authors of this study then last year posted a longer study, a 24-week study, where they, attempt, uh, where they attempted to restore G, uh, glutathione levels by, again, supplementing with glycine and N-acetylcysteine, and then looking at the impact of uh, the, that supplementation on various health-related parameters. So just as a, a quick overview of what they saw, uh, in, what they saw in part, because there are many findings that they saw uh, changes to, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, there's just not enough time. 
But uh, I'll also link to that study if you're interested. Uh, it, it'll be in the description. So just uh, shortly, they uh, briefly they they reduced. Uh, they saw reductions in lipid and DNA oxidative damage and reductions in inflammation, and then they saw improvements for mitochondrial function, insulin insulin sensitivity, and a few other measures. So let's go through that data. So first, I mentioned they uh, performed a 24-week study with the same doses of glycine and N-acetylcysteine in the previous shorter two-week study. So first, what was the impact on uh, levels of glutathione, in this case, levels of glutathione in red blood cells? So first, looking at young adults versus older adults, and again, they, this is data in a very small study, whether this would apply to the uh, general population in larger cohorts is unknown, uh, but it's encouraging data, as we'll see. So first, notice that, uh, once again, uh, older adults have lower levels of glutathione, uh, more than half, so 0 0.8 versus 1.8 in young adults. And then uh, they looked at two time points, so uh, 12 weeks of supplementation and then 24 weeks of supplementation, which is what we can see here, and that uh, they only supplemented the older adults. They didn't supplement the younger, young adults in this study. So what they saw was after 12 and 24 weeks, levels of glutathione were increased relative to baseline. So 0 0.8 went to 1 and 1.6 for levels of glutathione. So they essentially double glutathione levels in this 24-week study. Now, if supplementation is actually making an impact, when we remove supplementation, we'd expect to see a, a reversion back to baseline. And to assess that, they looked at data uh, 12 weeks after supplementation. So no supplementation for 12 weeks after 24 weeks of supplementation. And that, that's what they saw. So glutathione levels fell essentially back to where around baseline was, so 0.9. And these data are visualized here. So we're looking at uh, red blood cell levels of glutathione on the y-axis, and then 0, 12, 24, and 36 weeks after, uh, uh, after that. And um, we can see first that red blood cell levels are lower, uh, red blood cell le levels of glutathione are lower in older adults. And then after 12 and 24 weeks of supplementation, we see significant increases in glutathione levels in the older adults. And then after stopping supplementation, we see glutathione going back to where it was without supplementation. So when considering glutathione, glutathione's role as an antioxidant, what's the effect of increasing glutathione on oxidative damage to lipids and DNA in older adults? And that's what we see here. So first, we're looking at genomic damage as uh, measured by 8-hydroxydeoxyguanosine, and this is a uh, DNA oxidation uh, biomarker. And then they also looked at lipid, oxi uh, lipid oxidative damage, uh, in this case measured by plasma levels of F2 isoprostanes. So first, looking at young versus old, we can see that both DNA damage, DNA and lipid oxidative damage were at least fourfold higher in the older adults when compared with the younger adults. So what impact did supplement, supplementation have on uh, oxidative damage to DNA and lipids? And we can see significant reductions for both uh, oxidative damage to DNA and lipids as a result of cysteine, uh, N acetylcysteine and glycine supplementation. Uh, so about 107 for DNA oxidative damage to about 60 to then about 40. Each of those uh, uh, changes are statistically significant. And then for lipid oxidative damage, we see values from about 186 to 64 and even lower to about 48 uh, after 24 weeks of supplementation. So once again, if, if the supplementation is, ca uh, is causing these effects, when we remove supplementation, we'd expect to see a reversion back to baseline levels or in that direction. And that's what we see here. Uh, after the 24-week time point, when compared with 12 weeks of not supplementing with uh, glycine and N-acetylcysteine, we see levels of uh, DNA oxidative damage and lipid oxidative damage now increasing in the absence of glycine uh, and N-acetylcysteine. So inflammation was also reduced, and that's what we can see here. So for inflammation, I'm showing you levels of uh, IL-6, TNF-alpha, and high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, which I've talked, talked about in a lot of videos. So uh, first, we can see that uh, older adults have uh, much higher levels of each of these inflammatory markers when compared with young. For IL-6, it's more than ninefold elevated. TNF-alpha is about twice as high, or actually TNF-alpha and High sensitivity to C reactor protein are about twice as high in older adults when compared with young. So, what impact did supplementation have on these inflammatory parameters? And in every case, inflammation is reduced. So, IL 6 went from 4.8 to 2.7 to 1.1. I mean, that's a 75% reduction. TNF alpha went from 98 to 80 to 59. Again, uh, about a 30% reduction. And then, high sensitivity C reactor protein, also about a 30% reduction, 4.9 to 3.5 to 3.2. So once again, if supplementation is causing these reductions for inflammation, when we remove supplementation, we'd expect to see increases in inflammation. And that's, that's what they saw. So 
uh, inflammation uh, for uh, IL-6 went from 1.1 to 2, uh, TNF-alpha 59 to 73, and high sensitivity C-reactive protein from 3.2 up to 3.9. So significant increases in inflammation in the absence of gl uh, glycine and N-acetylcysteine and significant reductions in the presence of these amino acids. Uh, as, uh, so reductions in, in inflammation as a result of supplementation with these amino acids. Excuse me, it stuttered there for a second. All right, so I've shown you what was reduced, so what was uh, increased or improved. And uh, in, this, in this slide, we're going to see increased systemic fat oxidation and improved mitochondrial function in the glycine and N-acetylcysteine supplemented older adults. So first, we're looking at the fasting respiratory quotient. Now, the RQ is uh, uh, an index of uh, substrate oxidation, which means are you burning fat for fuel uh, systemically? Are you burning mostly fat? Are you burning protein? Are you burning carbohydrate? So as the RQ gets closer to 0.7, you're burning mostly fat for fuel, and that's systemically. Um, so first, we can see that older adults have higher RQ values when compared with younger adults, which suggests that younger adults have uh, 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 a greater predominance of fat oxidation systemically when compared with older adults who have a little bit less uh, uh, systemic fat oxidation. So what effect did glycine and N-acetylcysteine supplementation have on systemic fat oxidation using RQ as that measure? And what we can see is that RQ measures started to fall in the supplemented older adults from 0.84 to 0.79 to 0.77. Each of these differences are statistically significant, which suggests that in older adults, uh, supplementation with glycine and N-acetylcysteine improves systemic fat oxidation. Now, again, uh, if supplementation is causing these effects, when we remove supplementation, do we see the opposite and, and these effects uh, being lost? And that's what they uh, saw. So when looking at 12 weeks of stopping supplementation, compared with the 24-week uh, time point, we can see that the RQ values without supplementation start to go back to where they were at baseline. So the obvious question is, uh, when considering that RQ going closer to point, point 0.7 is a measure of systemic fat oxidation, is mitochondrial fat uh, oxidation involved in this process? So that's what we can see here uh, represented visually. So first, mitochondrial fat oxidation in old was worse when compared with young. And then after supplementing with uh, glycine and N-acetylcysteine, we can see improvements of both the 12 and 24 week time points. Now, if older adults are, are, are spending less, uh, uh, if, less, if there's less mitochondrial fat oxidation in older adults at baseline, uh, to, to meet the energy demands of the cell, it would make sense that, the, that they're also uh, having an increase in sugar oxidation with glucose oxidation as that measure. And that's what we see here. So older adults, when compared with younger adults, have higher levels of mitochondrial sugar oxidation. But after supplementing, we can see that sugar oxidation levels are reduced in the older adults. Uh, and in fact, down to levels that are similar to that found in younger adults. So what was also improved as a result of uh, supplementation with glycine and N-acetylcysteine, high doses of both of those, is insulin sensitivity. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, so plasma levels of glucose, plasma levels of insulin, and then uh, the, mul the multipli mul uh, sorry again, multiplying both of these measures uh, can be used to calculate uh, insulin resistance uh, using HOMA IR as the metric. So first we can see that older adults have uh, higher levels of glucose, insulin, and HOMA IR uh, when compared with the younger adults. And then after supplementing for 12 and 24 weeks, with the exception of glucose at the 12-week time point, each of these measures were improved. So for glucose, 5.4 to 4.9, uh, and this is in millimoles. That's about a 9 milligrams per deciliter change for going from 0 weeks to 24 weeks of supplementation. And then insulin levels were cut by more than half after 24 weeks of supplementation. And then uh, also insulin resistance was cut by more, HOMA IR was cut by more than half as a result of glycine and N-acetylcysteine supplementation. So again, if, if supplementation is causing, is causing these effects, when we remove supplementation, we'd expect to see these changes going in the opposite direction because the, 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 the initiating factor for these changes is being removed. And that's what we see here. So plasma levels of glucose, insulin, and insulin resistance as measured by HOMA IR all reverted uh, back towards baseline, which suggests that supplementation with glycine and N-acetylcysteine was causing these changes. So just as a brief summary, uh, so adding high dose glycine and N-acetylcysteine restored levels of glutathione to those found in uh, younger adults, but in older adults, and that improved four hallmarks of aging. At least that's the data that they looked at. Uh, they didn't look at the others. I wonder if those other hallmarks would have been improved. So the hallmarks that they improved were genomic uh, instability using DNA oxidative damage as one measure of that, uh, nutrient sensing, uh, 
in terms of uh, insulin sensitivity, that was improved. And then mitochondrial function was improved as a result of glutathione restoration. And then inflammation was reduced. So also improved that I didn't show in this video were, was uh, physical and cognitive function measures of both of those. And then plasma markers of endothelial and kidney function. Well, actually, in addition, also triglycerides were reduced. So uh, for more info, as I mentioned, uh, that this paper and all of the other papers that I mentioned in the video will be in the description. Uh, so that's all I've got for now. If you made it to the end, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching and listening, and have a great day.